Can you study medical school in South Korea? How did I apply for my scholarship? Did I have to show my bank statement? Is IELTS mandatory for applying? Did I have to show my notarized documents? Did I have to send the documents by mail? Why did I have to be this dramatic? These are some of the burning questions that you guys have and I have noticed that this is kind of like an impulse video honestly. I did not plan on filming this video at all so I do not really have any script ready either. So I'm just gonna go on the go. So I've noticed that SNU has opened their new admission session starting from 4th of July and since then a lot of you have been asking me so 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 many questions in the DMs and I am more than happy to help you guys honestly but I have decided to make this video answering all your questions so that it can reach to more people because the, the questions that you guys have been asking are kind of very similar to each other so I've decided why not make a video about it and like post it so that more people it can reach to more people and more of you can apply and get into your dream universities I really really wish that for all of you guys so I've decided why not make kind of like a Q&A series where I am answer your most frequently asked questions so this will be part one of this series so if you still have more questions you're more than welcome to comment them down in the under this video or you can dm me your wish is my command and i will reply so without further ado let's get right into answering your most frequently asked questions let's go okay so the one of the most important questions that I got was how did I apply in the first place? I did mention about this in my first video if you have not checked it out already, but I'm still gonna answer it again since the admission session is opening. So when you go to apply, I would rather suggest that you apply from a laptop or PC because I don't really like the mobile version of their website and it's you can apply more efficiently if you use a, your laptop or your pc so when you apply you go to the website and you will find this overview or announcement section under admissions part you're gonna click on it and then you can scroll down until you find the news that undergraduate uh, admission session has been opened something like this i am still going to put the link down in the description box below so that you can apply more easily so yeah questions that I got was how did I apply for my scholarship did I have to do anything else separately so the simple answer is it's very very simple to apply for the scholarship honestly so when you are applying like the whole when you're doing the whole admissions process and everything in one of those forms there's gonna be a question do you want to apply for scholarship yes or no and when you click and um, yes and then that's it you are gonna be considered for scholarship while you're applying it's as simple as that so unless you are i'm sorry so unless you are not really foolish enough to not take the yes box you are just as good to go that's just how the application process for scholarship works it does not take any other separate ad application process or anything like that when you're applying for the admission you are already con being considered for a scholarship as well it's as simple as that so yeah do not worry about that but i do have something to add i think that the reason that they ask this some sort of really dumb question that if you want scholarship because I, everyone wants scholarship right so i think that if you click the no, no box that you do not want a scholarship you are going to be considered in a different stream and i think it could be relatively a little bit easier to get in because you are not being uh considered for scholarship right so it's a little bit easier to consider you and your competition is kind of a little bit easier that's i think that's how it works it's kind of it kind of works similar for the u.s admissions as well i think so this is how it works you just have to answer your question that's it 
the next most important question that I got was if I have to send my notarized documents or how does this document submission work so let me be clear SNU have their admission process in a very specific manner like you apply in July right so when you're applying in July it's all online based so you're sending all your documents just the scanned copies so after you've applied they're gonna get give you the results in October so if you were preliminarily admitted you're not totally admitted yet you're just preliminarily admitted then they are going to ask for your original documents like the verified ones then you have to send those verified documents in october and then they're going to reach back to you later on with a result that if you were finally accepted after verifying all your documents so how the verification works is you're gonna take all your transcripts mark sheets like ssc and hsa mainly and then you are gonna go to a notary office and you're gonna get a, like a red seal it's so pretty i kind of like it a lot i don't know why anyways you're, they're gonna give you a seal from the notary office you're gonna take that seal and then you're gonna go to the education board that you're from for example i was from chitong board so i had to take all my certificates and like my transcripts and mark sheets and i had to go to the education board like the Chittagong board and then they gave another seal then I had to take all of that to the Ministry of Education in Dhaka I had to travel all the way to Dhaka and then I had to take the seal from the Ministry of Education then I had to take a seal from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and then I had to go to the Korean Embassy in Dhaka and then they verified all the documents and then I had to send all these documents all the way to korea by post so this is how it works bear in mind that this verification that you're getting is not on your original certificates at all you're gonna scan those certificates you're gonna take a color print out of them and then you're gonna get all that seal and then you're gonna send it they're not gonna ask for your original except i remember that i had to send my original high school leaving certificate for my testimonial so i had to send my hsa testimonial like my graduation certificate the original one other than that i really did not have to send any original documents so this is how it worked during my time so yeah so this is kind of like a lengthy process i hope you understood it if you still have questions about it i can answer them next up is the most 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 frequently asked question that i have ever gotten i am so surprised that so many of you want to go to med school wow anyways so i got this question that if you can study mbbs in south korea and honestly the simple answer is yes you can apply and you can study medicine in snu i'm gonna talk strictly based on snu i'm not gonna talk about other korean universities because i have not researched about them well i can speak for snu as a student myself but other than that i'm not gonna talk about other universities so how it works is you can definitely apply for MBBS or med school or nursing in SNU. But there is a twist here. Medical degrees, like in our country, is a five-year course, right? So there is this condition when you're applying for scholarship, there is this condition that you can apply for a scholarship only for courses that are four year long. So long story short, you can apply for med school but you will never be considered for scholarship so this is how it works honestly you're gonna apply but you're not gonna get a scholarship which is kind of like a huge drawback secondly i am gonna cover a personal opinion honestly if you ask me for a suggestion that should i study mbbs in korea or like slash snu i would suggest you no hold up hold up don't get mad at me already so this is kind of totally my personal opinion but mbbs or med school is kind of taught totally in korean the language barrier in korea is kind of very very prominent i will talk about that 
totally in details in another video but i'm just gonna go over it shortly you will face a huge language barrier when you're in korea they love their language they love their culture and they try to stick to your language mostly so even if snu is a very big international university snu have their medical courses in korean so unless you are very 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 uh, fluent in korean even then you're gonna face problems because these terms that they're gonna use the medical terms those terminologies you can it's gonna be very hard for you to learn all of that in korean like academic korean and uh, like communicative korean is very different from each other so this is why i kind of slightly discourage people for applying in med school in snu but this is totally your decision you can do whatever you please but i am free to put an opinion and that's what i did so yeah good luck <laughs> moving on to the next question is did i have to show my bank statement when applying so yeah long story short i did have to show my bank statement but not during application process so the easy answer is while i was applying for snu the only cost that i needed was the application fee other than that i did not have to show any kind of financial any proof or anything like that so after i got in after i was finally a seoul national university student then they obviously started asking me to go to, go to korea right though so i had to apply for the visa and everything that's when the bank statement part came in so when i was applying for visa then i had to show my bank statement not before that only that time and i think a lot of you have this question that what is the amount that you should show in your bank statement this could vary you can show however much you like i have seen in many groups that people kind of encourage you to show a bank statement of more than 20 lakhs like at least 20 lakhs like bdt that's it so this is the only time that you need to show your bank statement not before that so don't be worried while applying because it's gonna not, you're not gonna need it while applying so yeah another question that i got regarding this is even if i got the scholarship do i still need to show my bank statement the answer is yes i did get full ride scholarship but i still had to show my bank statement i think the reason behind this is when you're given this scholarship like if even if you get a full ride scholarship and you get stipend monthly you are still gonna need to show the bank statement because you when you're given the scholarship you are given it under a condition that you have to maintain a certain gpa if you cannot maintain that certain gpa they're not going to give you that money anymore and then you then you're going to have to pay your tuition and everything on your own when you are going to korea they want to make sure that you are financially solvent enough to continue your education in korea even if they take your scholarship this is the reason they want the bank statement for honestly another question that i got a lot of times was if i had to sit for an entrance exam so seoul national university is a public university in south korea and it's a very big deal here so the korean students have to sit for entrance exams and it's like a very big deal but for luckily for us international students we do not need to sit for an entrance exam rather they rather we are evaluated based on our academics and extracurricular activities and our essays and all of that no i did not have to sit for an entrance exam either so yeah this is i think that kind of works for our advantage yeah <laughs> if ilts or tofl or topic was needed or mandatory for my application process the answer is yes but not all three of them i did mention them in my first video as well you have to show either one of the results either ilts tofl or topic whichever one you choose you're gonna have to send the official scores and that's it
you just have to show that you are either fluent in either Korean or English. And I did have to sit for a Korean test later on after I got admitted, not before that. And that's just about it. You just have to send any of the scores but it is mandatory that you send any one of these scores. So yeah, IELTS or TOEFL for the topic is mandatory, but not all three of them. Yeah. Another very, very important question that I get is if my course is taught in Korean. So as much as I hate it, the easy answer is it's mixed, honestly. So when you're studying a course, it's not that you are studying only chemistry. It's like you have to choose other subjects as well, like majors and minors and all of that. So I'm going to put my schedule somewhere in here. So how this works is there are some of the courses that are taught in Korean and some in English. So it is kind of like a problem and I am going to make a detailed video about it later on when I, I don't know, talk about my struggles that I've faced and all of that. So yeah, I think you should look forward for that for a more detailed answer on this. But regarding this question about in which language my courses are being taught, some are in Korean and some are in English. <laughs> Another question that I get a lot is how if I know Korean. Um, 솔직히 저는 한국말을 조금 알아요. <laughs> Can't believe I embarrassed myself like that. But what I mean to say is I have um, not to flex at all. I did start learning Korean really really long time ago like when i was in grade 9 i think that's back in 2016 so i did start learning korean back then using a lot of resources oh, by the way if you want to know how i started learning korean and i don't know what are the resources that i use i can make a video about it you can tell me about it in the comment section and so Okay, kind of like a story time, I was getting obsessed with Korean culture and all of that back in grade 9. So I started learning Korean as, I don't know, like a hobby. I do love learning different kind of languages. I did start learning French as well. And I don't know, but I think learning Korean is what kind of paid off. So yeah i do know a bit of korean and i did have to learn honestly i did have to sit for a korean exam as well after i got in back in february i did have to sit for like a, a written exam some kind of like uh, multiple base multiple choice based questions and i did have to sit for a viva as well um, before i was learning korean as a joke or like kind of like a hobby but then i had to start learning for survival purposes so yeah <laughs> i am learning korean and and it's not perfect at all but i am trying so yay anyways thank you everyone for watching this video and supporting me as always i love you guys for it and I am planning on posting more videos. It would mean a lot to me if you considered supporting my channel by subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Till next time, bye bye!